Hey, everyone. We're back again. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank www.gsslradio.com, all gospel all the time, for allowing us this platform. Um, And thank my husband, Apostle Katie Owens. How are you, sir? Tired. Very tired. <laughs> Just like on the last podcast we did last week. Tired. I work all the time. Tired. Y'all know why you're right. I love you. Because we these nuts that he talked about last week and how I was smacking. I would dare not smack on here, but they are good. We want to thank everybody for listening to us. Thank you for, for tuning in. 2024, second uh, week of our podcast. We thank you all for tuning in. We're going to go ahead and move in. We're going to pray and move right on into what our subject was last week. Will a man rob God? And Apostle brought up a significant point at the very end. We're going to go right into that. Father God, we thank you. We praise you and we give you glory. We magnify your name and lift you up. God, we want just want to say thank you for this very moment. Yes. God, we thank you for the people who are listening in. God, we thank you for the people who apply these, these um, lessons that we bring each week. And God, we ask you to continue to bless them and over and over again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God. Now, topic, will a man rob God? Apostle, you brought out a significant thing when I was talking about how those people come into the, the Lord's house Busting and disgusted, no money at all, no dinero. You brought up a very a valid point. Some of them come in busting and disgusted, but their lights are still on. They have gas, they have food, water. they have water, they have all the utilities, they have all the, their social health things. Mm. What I said, the basic needs, your housing, your medication, your medical care, your yeah. utilities. Oh. You know, you have transportation. Yet you don't have what God requires, and you come in expecting God to do it again. Now we we're not we're not leaving out the ones who actually truly sacrifice hard to bring in their tithes, and and they are left with nothing. But we're talking about the ones that work a daily job. We're not talking about the ones who don't have a job and struggling and come in and looking for God to do it. We're not talking about you. We're talking about the ones who God blesses every second and moment of the day. Because there are people out there who, and I talk with you, a, a lot of them every day, that don't, they live in with family members because they don't have it. They don't have a job because they're, they're debilitated and they just want God to do it. They get help and they just want God to do it. They want God to make the, the crooked way straight. I understand that. I think what my husband was getting there was those who have the job, those who have the means, but instead of giving God what's off top, they take care of all they what all what all the material things first, and then come to God with the remains. Mm -hmm. That's not how God operates, because we don't want God to give us the leftovers. If God give us the leftover, we'll be we'll be met, some of us will be messed up. But we won't give God the leftover. We want to give God our our hand-me-downs, you know, of what we have left, the crumbs of what we got left. You know, after we done worked a long job, after we done took care of the husband and the wife, then we took care of the children, now we want to run and give the Bible and then fall asleep on God. Hey, I'm just, I'm just reading the room, just reading the room. Apostle. Please elaborate on what you meant about those who buy, spend all what they got and step for that little handful that, that, that them left over those crumbs and then come to God expecting. It's in your hands. Okay, first of all, let me go back. What I said last week was that because uh, Lady K, she shared and was saying how it was those that just don't have it when they come to church. There's no excuse for anybody. Anybody that's breathing, anybody that's living, you can give to God. Because God will make ways for you if you even don't have a dime. You have to sacrifice yourself first. 
Because if you don't sacrifice yourself, you still ain't going to sacrifice your money. Because if you can't commit you to the sacrifice of sacrificing your money, you ain't going to sacrifice your money. So you first have to sacrifice you. I had to sacrifice me by telling me, you can't do it Owen's way. Owen's flesh got to get out of the way. Owen's flesh got to die. Because flesh mm -hmm. say, save that money for them new shoes. Say mm -hmm. that money to get you a new suit. Mm -hmm. Say that money to get you an upgrade on your cell phone because you need one because the one you got about to crash because you crash every other day on you. Mm -hmm. And I need one bad, real bad. I need a cell phone, real bad, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. I need upgrade. But I sacrificed and used that phone. Why? Because at this time, I'm on a mission for something greater than the cell phone. Mm. There's me to fit, that has to be done, and it takes finances, sacrifice, and it takes me sacrificing me for the mission. But also, even if you don't have a job, why you don't have a job? Because everybody somewhere at some point in life, they worked. But what did you do with your finances when you were working? You put it all toward the bills. You put it all toward the lights. You put it all toward the gas. And then you sit right here wondering where your finances at, where your money at, where they going. You gave them all to, to you, you let them eat it up. When the Bible tells you specifically to first give God his tenth off the top and God will bless the rest. If you give God your best, he'll bless the rest and you won't end up in a distorted mess, boss. God is is a requirement. I know folks say that's ritual, that's old school, that's that's in the law. No, go before the law with Melchizedek when he received a tenth from the man of God. Okay, go to the New Testament when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and said, "See, he said, yeah, 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 yeah. You ought to pay your tithes, but don't uh, uh brag on it, boast on it, like." You know, and forget the rest that you're supposed to do after you pay your tithe. There's still a life you got to live after you pay your tithe. Because I know some folks that faithfully and they tithe and offer the seed sowing, but ain't living a hill of worth of being according to a holy life. Faithful in church, faithful in the choir, faithful in this, faithful in that, faithful with their monies, give, sow, pay tithes, offer. Because at the end of the day, will, how, she said, the question was, the, the topic is, will a man rob God? You rob God with how you live. You rob God when you don't give him God. You rob God when you don't give God communication. God want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. God want to spend time with you, intimate time with you. Let me go six, seven, eight months and not be intimate with. Him. I ain't talking about just sexually. I'm talking about just intimate for the conversation or a, hey, baby, I love you, baby, a kiss on the jaw and a forehead or let me take you out to eat. He goes some flour. He goes your favorite nuts. You can crunch on at night when I'm in the bed trying to sleep and rest my eyes. <laughs> You gonna get off me? <laughs> I ain't gonna get off you because it's intimacy. That's another. Topic, <laughs> That's another topic. So with this, what I'm saying to you, say there's no excuse for anybody across the board. Even if you own disability, you're gonna get up that wheelchair. Still doing right by what God calls you to do in His Word. You want to get off disability and be able to get another a regular job, or even if you don't get off disability, but you want God to sustain your check and stretch your check, give God your best, and He do the rest. You got to give God something to work with. Well, as I said last week, I said, there's no excuse. The Bible said, that are inexcusable, old man. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, break down, shake together, and run it over. Play the game. Jesus, folks, no excuses. My God. Now, you said that was no excuse. Right? There are no excuses. No excuses, according to his word. No excuses. No, no excuses, according to the word. And the poor should be with you always. Right. So those who are poor, what do they present to God? Like I said, first you present you to God. Right. And the scripture said that the poor can be with you always, but you don't have to be one of the poor. Right, of but course, I, said, I, said, I, said, I, said, I said the ones that are poor. I know, I'm poor. just saying. Those who are poor can still get to do more, to get more. Right, and they do that by sacrificing themselves. I haven't done accurate study on that scripture, but I want to do more study on that scripture to see if the scripture actually talking about poor as in broke financially, or the poor people you're always poor is poor in spirit. 
that's another topic. <laughs> but that's something we need research though, because you brought it up though in this matter. So even next week we come with this again, that can be uh, just something we can add into. It don't really have to be another topic. It can be something that we can interject into what we're saying here so we can clearly understand the other scriptures because we're teaching as we're reaching at the same time, even though we're on the, the subject of the really man around God. So we can start robbing God of not even knowing fully what God's saying in his word. That's right. And wait. So I can even say myself, I don't have the full uh, uh, revelation of the scripture yet because I haven't really just done dissect on it, dissect it or dialogue or done study on it. But that's something we can do, Lady K. And bring it in too, so we can understand. So, cause if because he, he could be saying exactly what you're saying, the poor, meaning the broke, the less fortunate, they don't have it, or it could be simply saying the poor in spirit. Because we need to know this, so we can be able to push that scripture out in its right content, so we'll be right. able to not usually use it uh, 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 in error. Right. I agree. Can but the poor, but but in the context of even I can take it like this, even in the context of what you're saying, even as being poor, poor is based off a level. What do you consider poor? Now, folks said that the Beverly Hills Billies, when they was down where they were at first before they moved to California, said they was poor. But to them, they wouldn't they could didn't consider themselves poor because they had a roof, they had food, they had water, they was eat, they was living their life, they was happy, they were satisfied, they was pleasing and kind and nice to each other. Now they kept went to another level in their finances when they went to 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 uh load up a truck and they moved to Beverly, but they still were the same people with all that money. They didn't lose mm -hmm. their 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 humility. They didn't lose their 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 kindness. They didn't get deep and get all fancy and and, and look down and know their other folks. No, they didn't. They just went across town per se. So poor is based off of what we say poor is based on looking at somebody else and their status and how they're living. They poor because they ain't got no car like me. They ain't got no car. They walk to work or, or they stay in the projects or they stay in the hood. They don't mean they're poor. They can be a choice where they choose to live. That's true. That is true. Because some folks are happy Satisfied, got everything they want. House, TV, family doing fine, living good, food, comfortable, in their little two-bedroom apartment, in the project. Not looking to go in and hide. Say you the five, feel the whole got Jesus. You got somebody over here across town in Greystone, miserable, on the edge of their balcony in a $40 million house, about to jump off. Why? Because they're poor in spirit. Because they're not rich in spirit. Because they don't have Christ. Lady K. Ooh, Lord, you took me somewhere else. I felt that. I know that. <laughs> Open up a candle of holy water. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. You we, 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 we started with... Um, Ooh, Lord, that was deep. You opened Rob, up somewhere. Robbing God and being, with the point of them, you know, being able to give, uh, even if, you know, making no excuses for giving, you know, and there's not no excuse for those who are poor. Because again, you can sacrifice, you can give a sacrificial um, for where you are, whether you are on disability, whether you are living on the street, you still can give to God and not rob him. And that's the point. You know, we don't want you to get in a place where you feel like you can't give anything uh, and you can't go, come to God empty handed, empty handed, just like the woman with the two mics, you know. She had gave all that she had to God. And some people would say, too might, that ain't nothing, you know, but she gave what she had. And when he said, there's no excuse, you give what you got. So that what God, God can overflow you with what you have, uh, what you had, overflow you with what you had. And even more, he said, uh, you don't know my thoughts. You don't know my ways. You know, he can go beyond me what your your imagination, what your mind can think. Um so don't don't never think that what you have is is little. Um this lady uh told a story about how she had a spoon and a shovel 
uh -huh. around her neck. And they, they asked her, why, why does she have a spoon and a shovel around her neck as a necklace? And the, the, the shovel was bigger than the spoon. And she told them because the spoon illustrates what I have to give to God. And the shovel, which was much bigger than the spoon, shows me that what God will measure up to what I have. That means that God utensil is much bigger than what I can ever give him. So every time we give to God, God has give us back more abundantly uh abundance over 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 the amount that we could ever give we can't be this given and why would you rob him it's like you cutting off your hand to feed your face because god is always blessing god is always giving and all he says is to give me a little bit just imagine if I take, if you give me a dollar and I take the 10 cent out of it and give you back the 90, for every dollar that you give me, I only take 10 cent out of it. You do the math. You do the math. So out of every $10, you giving me a dollar. For out of every thousand, you giving me a hundred. You still breaking. You got 900. So why would I rob God of that little bit when God can give me more than what I've given him? So there's no excuse for you not even giving the little bit that you have to God because he's going to give you more than enough. And though I know my husband looking up the poor, that's what you're doing, aren't you? Oh, wait. Um, so I want I want to encourage you all because we came back this week to expound on what we stopped on last week was 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 that there's no excuse. There's no excuse on you coming to God empty handed. And y'all see how I build it up so my husband can come and counter. Uh, talk about the the little bit that we we present to you is you being poor, you coming to God empty handed, and He came right back and tell you, no, you 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 round up what you got because there's no excuse for you not to have something to give to God. It's something, give it to Him, a sacrificial offering to Him yourself and then ask God to whatever it is that you can do to do better to do it better to do better for him for him not for you for him because if he do it for you it's gonna it's gonna boomerang back to you and that's the good thing about God is that it doesn't matter uh what shape you're in if you give it out of the abundance of your heart, God will take that. And God's multiplication does not match up to man's multiplication. And God's division does not add up to our division. God's multiplication, uh, multiplication skills does not match man's multiplication skills. What you saying? I don't care how you try to add in God's calculator. 10 plus 10 is not 20. God's 10 may bring you a hundred thousand or even a million. If it come with a sincere, cheerful heart. Not a down to press heart. If you skip up to the offering. Skip up to the offering line and give God your very last. And before you get back to your seat, somebody will bless you with more than what you gave. That's God's telling you that I did it again. You Come didn't. On now. He did. He said, I done did it again. 
Say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. I, he said, I done did it again. And what you do? I bet you, I dare you to turn around and take 10% of that and skip back to the line and give some more. I dare you to. God said, try me. Try me. Try Who me and see. See if I am for you. See if I am your covering. See if I am your way out of no way. See if I am the light in your darkness. See. Taste it. Try him. Because I don't want you to face God and rob him. I don't want you to stand before him and rob him. Rob him in his face? After he done blessed you, robbing him in his face? I don't care how poor you are. I don't care how, how, how successful you are. He said, will a man rob me? And he said, yeah. They rob me every day. All I ask is some time. All I ask is for monetary gifts. All I ask is for them to, they're, they're part of them. All of them, actually. And watch me turn the things around in your life. We're going to conclude. Are we concluding or you got something to add on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're concluding. You tonight. Huh? So you own it tonight, this afternoon. Let me let him go to bed because he didn't got his next and mi afternoon mixed up. <laughs> this I'm is, tired of working all week. You know this, how I do. <laughs> and it gets dark early around here. This is an awesome show, y'all. I, I really enjoy doing it with my husband. Okay. Um, we, br we bring out some some okay. great topics, and I well, love the, I love the way he allow God to bring subjects out of subjects that we talk about. Um, he made, he brought up a good topic, which we're going to, we're going to touch on that. Um, uh, when, whenever we uh, come back again, uh, and it's the one about the poor and I'm going to let him end it with his statement. And then we're going to close out. We thank everybody for tuning in. What is I that? Huh? I don't have a statement. Well, I thought you went and looked up the the, the poor. I don't know. I told you, no, go ahead. You got it. Oh, okay. Got it. Well, y'all, we're going to end this. We thank you all for tuning in on tonight. We thank you all for what you've done. Again, this is your Lady K, and this is Apostle Katie on, and this is What's the Tea. Did I say What's, what's the Tea? tea? No, I think I just jumped in. I didn't even say what's the tea on the last one. But this is your, this is the what's the tea. And we thank you all for tuning in. Stay tuned to the next song. It is your Lady K. And that tour is coming around to you. Look for us in your town. Bye for now.